All right, we set and ready. Yes. Yep. I heard two. Yeah. Meh. Goody. Anywho, anyhow, last time on the dynamics of good and evil. Bundle the Stalker Tabaxi, Ranya the Halfling Druid, Dashkin the Barbarous Dragonborn, and Mephisto Bard Feliana had finally arrived at the capital city of Redport to seek out leads of their own separate agendas. Setting up camp in the temporary gateway district and meeting some local tavern folk, the party got themselves set up with city passports and had a harrowing encounter with an off-kilter fortune teller who gave a dire warning to Miss Feliana. The next day, Dashkin set off to find a cohort of his from his mercenary days, while Feliana successfully navigated her resume into the hands of the Performance Guild in Redport. Rania went schoolbook shopping for his upcoming potion classes with the franchise's school, and Bundle met with the head of the Quicks Thieves Guild, only known to him as N. Bundle learned that he had a second trial to perform before he was inducted into the Thieving Guild for work and training, and thus he was whisked off for costume fitting so as to rob the keep seat of a notary seal, which would only serve to help him in his group's further endeavors. Welcome back to the dynamics of good and evil. So yes, uh, is there... Anything anyone else wants to follow up on besides Dash or Bundle before we dive into uh, this shortened session's uh, meat? Nah. I'm good. Alright, alright, alright. So. Alright, alright, alright. So, Bundle. You have been set up with the. Uh, Delightful company that is. Why am I blanking now? Is it Sharon the Dark Elf? Sharon, yes. Sharon. And he has busily ushered you towards the outlier of the Florist Guild and it's like, right, right, come on, we gotta go, we gotta go. And he just shoves you out with your uh, delightful. Your delightful new clothes that are a little tight around the, uh, the the calves, but otherwise it's it's a good fit. They set you up rather quickly, rather well, you think. And as you guys, your mic cut out. Uh, of course, it did. Uh, I will eventually get better means one day, Trebek. Okay, so you are currently outside the Florist Guild, and uh, you and him are looking not suspicious at all in your matching uh, courier outfits. Uh, the it's it's a little early in the afternoon. We're finally the uh, the markets act acting up again. There's this scent of hay and mead and uh, random spiced fruit that carts keep passing by with as it's just it's not quite super bustling but the the day is currently getting on with its ways so do, 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 do. so you and Sharon are do, 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 do. and it's just a little angular move you guys are moving like fish hooks right through the you had to move through one door, and then as soon as you got to the mid-sector, you guys took notice of the fact... Yeah, you got to, like, the edge of the mid-social sector, where there's, like, a bunch of temples, as well as two taverns, a shop that says Fountains Galore, as well as just ducking alleys around every other corner, it seems. And... Uh, you pass by this gambling hall, and as you round the gambling hall, you see the checkpoint, where there are two guards in just uh, faded brick-colored. Uh, 
Yeah, well, the guards have like little tri-corner hats, and uh, on their epaulets they have bricks, like little uh, felt bricks, like like felt uh, felt uh, scrappings that are in the shape of bricks. They just sit there at their little uh, white plasticky desk in front of this uh, rather impressive-looking gateway that has this slight sheen about it as you approach. And, uh, yeah, you see it about 20 yards away from the rear entrance to the, to the gambling hall. Uh, what is your prerogative? Uh, seeing as how we, we had, we've finally managed to get our way through, and the guard since uh, has uh, noticed me, I uh, go up to the guard and say the newly designated cur uh, couriers, uh, junior courier at that, Still uh, getting used, to it. and uh, let's see. God damn it! I had this for. <clears throat> Okay. Um, thing is, how I'm in front of the guard now. Uh, I say that I'm here to to um. Uh, shit. One is one outside of character. Is this the notary desk that I'm looking for? Or no, I have to go actually to the. Well, uh, no, this is the checkpoint into the line, which is the okay. separation to the uh, rest of the districts. Do, 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 okay. Do. Well, yeah, this is the separation. The okay. Well, I'll just tell the guard that I'm one of the new junior couriers looking to find my... Uh, to start my duties here today. Uh, the little freckle-faced uh, guard with the uh, brick epaulets that, that's that's seated currently. He looks at like, like, look, uh, all I need is your name and your registry emblem. Uh, and don't uh, don't really need your life story unless you wanna, but I, I guess. Well, nothing wrong with making conversation, right? I say as I produce items necessary. Yep, your registry emblem is basically like a little uh, slip card that uh, that Sharon and uh, and quickly uh, stuffed into your pocket. It's 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 very emblematic. It's sort of like a uh, a sewn in patch that also has these very crystalline qualities about it. That if you flip it over, has just little symbols and uh, pictograms depicting like your current station and your like allowances. Okay. Well, then I produce the emblem and, and uh, hand it to him. Yeah, he takes it, flips it over, uh, takes out a little sponge, dips it in ink, and then stamps it onto a piece of, uh, like, wax paper. Uh, yeah, you just assume, like, well, that magic shield does something to you when you get through it. Whoa. Um, Although it also could just be that. that you're just you'll get used to it, and like your your body itself is adjusting to a new uh, program, sort of like astronauts uh, when they first reach space for like a more period of more than ten seconds. All right. Well, thing is how Sharon's definitely behind me, who probably got the same sensation. I look to him and see how he. He's just sitting there chewing on some some chiclets, like <laughs> first time. That sensation is not something I'm used to. Eh, like I said, first time. You get used to it. What is that? Is that some way to uh, keep out the riffraff or something? We've been trying to get past something like that for years. Even N's having trouble uh, detecting what exactly it is. It took us a while just to find a way just to... Like, we have no way to get past it ourselves. We really just have to de depend on our own devices, really, to get through. Fair enough. That's something I want to have happen all the time. He says as he, as Bundle 
just carries on to where their destination is. Mm-hmm. So as you guys usher through the, the separation, uh, you just are walking down like a little like a tanned sandy like hall that goes down for about uh, 30 yards. So you just keep walking, walking down this way, and eventually at the end, a, another set of, this time, uh, white gates open up, and as the sun beats through, you see ahead that there are towers of just what you can only assume is the keep. Like, very, like, tall, onion-headed, jewel-encrusted architectures. It swirls up into the sky, it seems, for, like, hundreds and hundreds of meters. And all around it, there are uh, merchants, businessmen, uh, what you can assume are, like, barristers in all these fancy, fancy clothings, just maneuvering around. Uh, there aren't, there isn't that, there isn't a lot of horse and cart or carriages going in that you can spot besides, like, one or two to your whole vantage point as you enter this region. All you can see is a lot of foot traffic, but it's not, like, crammed full like a can of sardines. It's just, wow, there's... Didn't seem yeah, everyone... I guess it's still, like, you know, early morning traffic, but not super busy. It's like, a, a early mid-afternoon traffic. Okay. Holy hell, my ear just had a... Seeing it, even seeing all this, Bundles still, his eyes are darting all around, you have, trying to get, like, he's trying to take in all that he can, while also making sure he stays on task, and his mind's having a, uh, a fun time jump, jumping between, okay, this looks, that looks cool, that looks cool, that looks cool, wait, we got, we have a job to do, so he's, yeah, he, there, he, there, there seem to be. Yeah, yeah, the thing that catches your eye also is that there are canals inside of this royal district. What? Oh, like um, I'm guessing less than ten should, feet away from you. There's an edge that leads down into like a gushing like river flow type area where there is indeed a short gondolina floating down. It's only about like eight feet long, but there is indeed a uh, a uh, an elf. Uh, strumming along the depths of the waters with just uh, a little boat structure to uh, navigate under some uh, stone bridges and things. Venice, then. And uh, Charon uh, taps you on your shoulder. like, yeah, no, it's nice. No, it's nice, but uh, you can, uh, once you get your passported, you can uh, come in here all you want. Well, Depending on what kind of level passport you got, but anyway, anyway, we gotta head for the. You remember where we're going, newbie? Uh, he he shakes his head, trying to get back into the mindset of, "All oh, right, we have a job to do," and he and he says, "Right, right, right. Sorry, can't help. I'm I am a tourist in this case, after all." Yeah, just and, don't make uh, it so apparent, or else. You know, I, there are eyes everywhere. Fair enough, but even as a junior courier who's new to the gig, kind of hard not to look like you don't know where you're going. He says he moves forward, trying to find where where they were, where the job is supposed to take place. Now, yeah, as you trudge forward, uh, maneuvering your way into the traffic, you, you do remember that N specifically told you that where you're heading is on the outside of the keep itself. You're heading to the keep seat, which is basically like the government office that is located just outside of the keep proper. And as you approach uh, the towers and the mass that is the, the royal keep building, you do notice that there are, like, walls and gates surrounding the keep proper. And as you get closer and closer, you do realize that actually you will have to maneuver around the fence and gate to find your exact position. You have to, uh, like, but luckily, uh, roll a, uh, perception check with advantage. Alright. Wow. Double fail. <laughs> 
Ow. All right. So yeah, you just look around and you're you're you're, you're keeping distracted. It's like, oh god, this place is so cool. And uh, uh, and actually, uh, you you got like a bead of sweat going, and uh, a gnat comes by and starts bothering you for like mm, mm, sustenance, man. I sweat in it. <laughs> Oh, you sure do attract one thing. Anyway, yeah, look look at your feet, sonny boy. You said you sure do attract something, I guess. I did not hear what you said. You cut. Well, I guess if you're going to attract any attention, I guess this is the least of our problems. I, 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 I apologize. He says he flicks away the, the bug that was bothering him earlier and tries to focus up. Look at your feet, sonny boy. Hmm? Looks down at his feet. And you see little grid lines are on the ground and it's almost like those those footprints at museums or things like this way to the restroom this way to except it's uh they're like little inscriptions in elvish as well as common and uh and a few other languages that you don't quite recognize that say like in e within each foot like this way to keep security this way to arcania this way to and you eventually, looking around, you finally find a very light palm green foot line that says this way to the notary. Uh, Bungle's ears perk up as he sees the notary, and uh, he actually doubles his pace as he goes to follow the footsteps. All right. Sharon is, is a bit ahead of you as he's also following it of his own accord. Just like, come on, come on. And as you keep continuing, you are dodging uh, these uh, these kids with, like, massively intense uh, goggles and uh, spectacles on, maneuvering and, like, waddling their way around, seemingly from, like, a very prep, seemingly, like, 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 from a preparatory school. Meanwhile, there is also just a, uh, a gent... An orcish gentleman in this motley attire that looks sort of like a, a Sherwood Forest type of get get up, except it's dark brown, and he's just carrying the sack over his back, just whistling a small tune to himself. And also there is a um, uh, there is a uh, character in in orange a uh, tunic. With a zigzag, uh, belt-like structure, wandering around the center, the center like bridge area, with a sprite following as he just shouts incoherently and like, nah, nah, just running away with with his sword tucked away and a big old shield on his back. Uh, as we're walking by, I just make a side note to Sharon and say, I don't think I have to worry. Being the one being noticed, that outfit over there it looks like it's not loud enough to, to say its own statement. Or rather, shout it. Good thing. Good thing, too. <laughs> and um, as you eventually round a corner, you do see a big old, just dark, dark navy blue building that on the, the inscription says... Keep seat notary. Hmm. It has these little like pyramidical towers on like pyramidical chimneys on either side of it, like little chimneys with like pyramids on top of them. As uh, cheerfully puffing away some steam. And uh, there's there's a brief line off to the side, but then you as you get closer you do eventually notice a deliveries and pickups that Use uh, use side entrance. Okay. Seeing that, 
I am uh, not a Sharon to say that I'm, I'm ready to go ahead and get started and twar- go- start going towards where that sign is leading me around the building to the back end. Sharon nods and keeps chewing his chick, his cheekle as you guys round the corner and there is indeed a second there is a steel shut door with a little like eye slot and it simply says couriers please be courteous when knocking well then just to be uh <laughs> just to be a little shit i do the uh the common knock of the uh, a shave and a haircut <laughs> After a couple of seconds of silence, the slot slowly opens. As these two yellow dots appear inside the darkness and say, This, what is your business here today? Uh, yes, uh, I'm here as a, the new junior carrier, but... A bundle of arrows at your service, I'd say with a light, light bow. Uh, business? Right. And I... Did I, did I not give you a, a cover business? I don't have a... Oh, I just right. have the guard prompt, Catania's Market, designated courier. Alright, so and... Sharon steps in and uh, lightly pushes you like a, a couple inches of size. Like, yeah, we're, we're here for uh, Borden's Bake Sale Incorporated. And uh, the little yellow circlets narrow, and uh, they disappear from the entry hole for about 30, 45 seconds. Then it comes back and is like, uh, yeah, you are early. Nothing wrong with that, right? He takes a look at your emblem and peels the wax seal, the wax paper off the back of it, inspects it. Compares it to his little uh, ivory clipboard and stares at Sharon, stares at you, nods curtly, and backs up into the background, into the building. I think you're right. Yeah, because it got to stares at Sharon, stares at me, nods, and then you cut out. And then he slow. Testing? Yeah, I can hear you now. And then he. Clip, clop, clip, clops, backs into the building, into the slightly darkened uh, entryway. All right, I follow on inside. <laughs> All right, as you enter, it looks sort of like the the kitchen area of like a takeout place, where there's just this long hallway with like windowed like offices and like stops, check points to check in at, like one that says. Uh, uh, businesses A through D, uh, businesses E through J, businesses K through K through uh, like R, and then businesses S S through numbers, and there, yeah, the tiefling stares at you, strokes his curled little uh, beard hair. And covers his, uh, yeah, crosses his arms. What are you waiting for? Do you not know right. your first lot of your business? Well, uh, Bundle hesitates for a second to see if he can come up with a reason why he's not just going for what he needs and. He tries his best to come up with a lie of, oh, right, uh, still uh, shaking off the, the, the new, newness to, this, to all of it. Just start today off, of course. 
He says with a with a uh, as, as presentable of a smile as he could. Sharon pipes up. Yeah, he's new. He's so overwhelmed with like, oh wow, there's there's boats and there's there's like flies and they love me. Oh oh wow oh. And at least you didn't call me Greenhorn halfway through. He says as a, as a dame. The tiefling gets a sly little grin on his face and it's like, you you work for Bordens, right? A That's correct. A through J. Ah. Yeah. Right there. And Sharon holds your shoulder before you go. Like, mm -mm. actually, we've also got a we've got a special pickup from the uh, diplomatic desk. The tiefling stops, opens back up his pocket where he placed the wax paper copy, and inspects it closely. -er. He's like, is it, is it, is it? Where is... Oh, there it is. It's a bit smudged there. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> Alright, so you're going to head down this hall, and you're going to take a left... Uh, go in, go in the, uh, purple striped curtains. Uh, bundled in, quickly nods and, uh, looks at Sharon. I, I guess you can take care of the, uh, the other business first. He says as he quickly goes towards, uh, where the tiefling mentioned, heading down the hallway to the left. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sharon nods curtly. And proceeds to uh, approach the A through the, the 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 desk that assigns the business as you head down the hallway towards uh, your destination. Uh, there are a few just halflings, elves wandering around with stacks and stacks of paperwork, some scrolls, and uh, there's a there's at least two or three uh, humans, human teenagers trying to deliver dry cleaning. It seems with these uh, massive like. Uh, clothing storage bags. They just can't seem to fit through this one door. It's like, I just, just can't fit. And as you turn the left and you make your way around the corner, you do indeed see along the left-hand wall a uh, entryway with uh, purple and gold striped curtains uh, lining the entryway with this uh, little pull bell that says, it says, if unoccupied, please ring bell. All right. I go to the little curtained area and I inspect to see if there's actually someone there rather than just pulling it absentmindedly. Hi. As you step inside, there is indeed a candlelit room that is circular in shape. There is a uh, a little crescent-shaped like standing desk towards the very, very back, as well as another windowed uh, vel like a stanchioned off area with like the lo the guest services line where it's like zigzag zigzag. Hmm. As there is a a gnome, a pair of gnomes working the crescent shaped desk on uh, little spinny chairs uh, with mass with like one with spectacles, one with uh, a little like a uh, accountant visor, but it's blue. And meanwhile, at the uh, the stanchion duff windowed area, there is a uh, a gold skinned elf with uh, white eyes, just uh, standing there, like leaning on the counter, playing with like a little fountain pen. All right, and uh, I'm guess to make sure that this is the person I need to be uh, looking for. I'm going to... I guess it w would it be a history check to make sure the bundle remembers. Oh, yeah. This is the Intelligence guy. Intelligence check. Okay. Yeah, you remember that you that you were instructed to go to the window in uh, by... Uh, yeah, yeah, because N kept reminding you. Remember, all you need to do is get into the window, flash in the grin, and... Uh, and as you approach the windowed area, you do notice uh, one, uh, 
behind the elves' earlobe, there is that white mark. Well then, just to keep things uh, looking normal, I b- bundle strode up to the window, not paying any mind to the to the uh, to the two n- gnomes at work, and uh, gets the uh, elves' a- elves' attention with a uh, a very calm greeting. <clears throat> yes. Uh, yes, I was sent here to uh, pick up a package. Um, by the way, rather, rather nice, rather. Ah, uh, uh, can't talk. <laughs> um, I was sent here to pick up a package. One of the uh, one of most uh, importance. He says with a with a sly smile on his face. And uh, let's see to make it ever more prevalent why he he's here and this is the contact he's supposed to make. He starts pointing, po- pointing and stroking at the area where he sees the mark on the on the elf on his own face, not on the elf's face. I was about to say that would be me. Yeah, yeah, that was <laughs> right he here. <laughs> You feel a sharp pain, and suddenly your hand is missing. Uh, uh, no, he he, he tilts his head uh, to the side, and uh, just flicks the fountain pen in the air, and and it sticks in the in the top of the windowed area. And as you look around, there are sheaths for fountain pens lining this window, like at least two on. At least like three on each like of the four corners. Oh wow! And he just perfectly stuck it in the direct center. Now it's just this little pen hanging about five inches from the from the ceiling of the windowed area. The lip, oh. the upper lip. <laughs> He's like, mm-hmm. He uh, walks back off to the side where there's a little table. He shuffles around it. Uh, and you see the ta- the the desk actively lift up uh, a, f- a few feet as he ducks under, seemingly steals a brick from the wall, and then wraps it in in package paper, sprinkles it with powder, and as he does, the paper crinkles and shrinks like shrink wrap over the over the brick. Wow. Um, the whole time that that's happening, since since the guy is actually going to get the 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 package that he's there for, Bundle's going to look behind him for just a moment, just to see if anyone else is looking in on this. Nope the uh, the two hat the two uh, I said halflings right? These are gnomes. Gnomes, yeah. The two gnomes are busy. It seems uh, trying to set up a. Uh, new Fibonacci like system where it's like this giant little like decorative like puzzle structure uh on top of their desk it's like come on you move it right there it's like no you got to be careful it's uh, they're not looking and there's no one else in the room besides you the elf and the two gnomes okay seeing as they're preoccupied he goes back to seeing how the elf is uh things you turn around. He's there with the package. And bundle nods and uh, says, "I I appreciate the swift the swift the swiftness of your work. I'll make sure that uh that it, things are mentioned that things that I'll make sure that it is mentioned things went by smoothly." Mm-hmm. Nods. And I take the package, turn on my heels. As you I... turn around, he grabs your wrist, holds out a hand. Mm. <laughs> Gratuity. Bundle then sighs, rolls his eyes, 
and pulls out uh, a pouch containing about 10, 10, 10 gold inside of it. The hand does not move. <clears throat> Bundle raises a brow. Really? <laughs> It's a very interesting business. I would almost say that you're a little light in the pockets. How much gold do we have? Uh, an exact, we have, besides the 10 gold I'm about to give, I was about to give this guy, you have a, an additional 240 in gold pieces and 1,725 silver pieces. We're not broke. I say give him. Uh, I say give him fifty, because <laughs> this boy, Whoa. this boy is. I'm sorry. I don't want to get caught. I don't want to get caught. That's, that's, that's you're, fine. You're related. You're related to us. That... What, what, you're not the one getting caught. caught. You're not the one involved. <laughs> no, but you're related to us, and uh, and we may, we may be trial by relation. You don't know that. They don't know that. The thieves guild doesn't know that. Just relax. <laughs> Sorry. Continue on. Meta gaming. Stop it. Says you. Bundle grits his teeth a bit and says, "All right, all right. You, you have me there." He says as he produces fifteen more gold and says, "Will this suffice?" It with a persuasion. All right, persuasion. Ten's not terrible. It's not I'm great. Not the, the 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 gold skinned elf kind of sneers and takes the additional gold. Like, yeah, book it cheap. And places a little sign on his little window that says "Out to lunch." And disappears around the corner. Oh, bundle pockets the uh, the package saying under his breath in See, what is he not doing? an elfish no he says in in uh, in dw in uh, in dwarvish a uh, a rather uncouth statement about how his his pockets are light are now lighter due to due to um, cir unfortunate circumstances and uh makes his way back out the way he came in. As you exit that way, a, a dwarf sitting against the wall says, oh, I hear that. <laughs> <laughs> he's got he's got like a little hot water bottle sitting on sitting on his head. Uh, Bundle gives him a <laughs> gives him a chuckle and says, At least I have a kindred spirit even here and makes his way out. Gruff nod, and as you approach back towards the the entryway, uh, you you come back around the corner and find those poor boys the dry cleaning. Now have made even a a more ridiculous blockage, and that now they have like five bags, each about a man in size, that they have somehow not still not been able to to get inside this room they are attempting to enter. This bundles just just goes. How could this have gotten worse? As he looks around to see if anyone's actually trying to help them. You see, it, it seems they gained another helper in the, in the form of like a uh, we can only assume it's an intern, like a young a young human in this little bolo tie and uh, uh, a modest looking tunic. As he's trying to help them, like, come on, you gotta you gotta lift, lift, dang it, lift. And they're they're trying and maneuvering. It's like, God dang it! And uh, it seems they're doing their best not to Let's drop any of them. Uh, but being the good-hearted cat that he is, just looks over and asks, "Everything on?" Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Could, could, you, could you grab that that one hanging off hanging off my shoulder? It's I can't drop it. Or else I lose my tip. 
Bundles just sighs, looks to see how how much time he's has actually passed since he actually has what he needs. You've only spent a good five minutes inside of the structure so far. Okay, so he feels like it wouldn't hurt to help, but to make sure he's not going to be screwing himself over, he helps him with it up, but he looks to see if he's going through an entryway first. No, you're, you're still outside. You're still out in the hallway. You're just pulling it off this man's back, and uh, it's, it's half-opened, as you see inside this very, very vibrant dress. It's like, it's only half open, so you can see a bit through it. And it's like, there's this slight, slight plasky cover about it. Like, cellophane. And it, uh, it's just, it's, uh, it's pretty pretty, yeah. Um, Bundle's like, well, that's a nice dress, but I don't want to compromise things. So, he does as the, uh, the, the poor fellow asks lifts it up and uh fastens it better so it's closes up properly all right I need you to make a deck save real quick uh deck save or sleight of hand hmm sleight of hand and then we'll see 16 all right you manage to finagle it closed as you just realize, oh my god, these bags are really unwieldy. <laughs> no wonder they have Like, it seems trouble. like, it seems almost like they're bigger than they look in some regards. Like, it seems like a dress bag, but no, it feels like you're carrying, like, two duffel bags worth. Like, not in terms of weight, but in terms of, like, amount. A laundry oh, wow. bag of... I uh, I assist as best as I can, but do it as quickly as possible because I need to be out of here as soon as as soon as I can. Yeah, and after that, another gnome pokes his head out of the entryway. It's like, oh God, what are you doing? Like, boys, come on, you. God, uh, there's still like, there's still an entire canister open. Come on, and he just like slaps the the young man's ankle who you were assisting. He's like, yeah! He just tumbles forward into the entryway while the other two lads are like, up, oh, up, oh, coming, coming, coming. Because that poor lad in front of you was carrying three of them. So you could only guess from assumption like, ooh. She's dead now. <laughs> well, I assist him with the and say, well, perhaps you might want to lighten your load. I know it's a lot, but... He's already tumbled inside from view. Oh. I... Yeah, like, he He's disappeared inside now. inside the, the newest He's entryway. He's fucking dead now. Alright, before I go through that entryway, I want to do a, at least an investi a quick investigation. Will this set something off if I run through here with, with the uh, stuff I have in my pocket? Actually, the gnome looks at you like... You don't look like... You don't look like you're with the, the, the cleaning company. You don't even look I'm like you're not, a bloody intern. I'm not. I'm a courier. I'm... I'm... I'm, I'm kind of late as, as it is. What are you doing with your hands, son? The mistress is cleaning! Snaps his fingers as a... a go as the, uh, the bag starts floating in midair, and he's like, Don't put your hands on that. You're not I, authorized. I then that tumbled forward and says, he could do that the whole time. <laughs> Imagine what would happen if your, if your, if your hands had managed to touch the material. Good gracious. I, I know, I know how to not touch it, touch the fire. How dare you? How dare? Grr. He's, he's like, shakes his head, just, Dis disappointed, they're like, oh, God, so it's gone too, God. And disappears inside with the uh, f now floating laundry bag in the air following him inside. All the other two lads, like, I, I guess you saved Clarence, may maybe. Uh, I hope he didn't ruin that 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 preservation spell we put on it. 
Uh, Bundle just shakes his head. Just be more careful. It looks like you were about to have all of that fall on top of you. Aye, aye. They nod their heads in uh, perfect unison and then uh, trudge their way toward it in into the entryway and sort of like Meanwhile, sidestep their Meanwhile. ways in. Meanwhile, right. Clarence. Oh my god, damn it! <laughs> Anywho. Now that that's dealt with, Bundle is now make booking his way out out of it. Not running, but speed walking. Yeah, it's only a, a f- uh, like a dozen yards from the place you were to the the proper entry where you entered at. And uh, Sharon's there, s- s- leaning up against the wall, filing his nails. Ah, you're back. Cool. Yeah, I had a bit of a... no issues. No, 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 we're we're good. Just interesting fellows on the way back. But we, we let's go ahead and go. Interesting fellows, guys. Hope you didn't leave anything behind with you. At that moment, check bundle, your pockets. Check your pockets. <laughs> oh no, the package is still there. Okay. <laughs> like strange fellows. What you mean, the cleaning boys? Eh, they, apparently they were having a bit of a trouble with a bag or two. He stops. You didn't touch anything, did you? Well, I helped one of them lift a bag that was about to fall off the side. Why? There was an uncomfortable silence. Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! Oh god! It's probably nothing. Bundle sighs and says, My paw prints are on that bag, aren't they? We didn't bring gloves. With, you, didn't, you didn't bring gloves with you, did you? Looks to his paws. They're naked. <laughs> Bundle breathes in. <laughs> Sharon looks like he's about to chew on his tongue. Like amateur. Breathes out. Let's leave immediately. <laughs> a good idea. And they, he does like a little half half-hearted salute to the tiefling man he's like like yes yes stay s- something out there to just come yeah, on your way goes ahead and uh, starts making his way and uh, as he's making his way out that in case anything were to happen he starts taking his cl- that is would be Pricking his own to ch- the, the look. Hold on, I can't hear a darn thing. You're cutting okay. out every like other second. Can you hear me? He's hurting. All right. Can you hear me now? Try again. Okay. As they're walking out, Bundle is quickly taking the time to take one of his claws and indent into the claws enough to where it if it causes him to bleed, that's fine but he is doing it enough to change whatever his paw print would normally be enough to where it would be the same as it's on the bag so what, you're scarring, you're scarring your pads? yes because <laughs> if that means that there is evidence that someone was here that's not supposed to be there he's at least changing it as best as he can on the fly you, you walk around the corner and you, you keep at this while Sharon's like, Oh, God of mercy, God of, God of mercy, what the hell is that? What the hell are you doing? <laughs> the bundle looks back. To, I don't think we have time to talk about about this. Let's keep going. <laughs> You're in an awful permanent state of mind, aren't you? He gives a half hiss as he moves out. <laughs> Yeah. Look, it's beginner's mistake, but seriously though, this is like intermediate level shenanigans. Anyway, it's okay as as long as who touched my clothing? As long as as long as shit hits the fan. <laughs> That's my assumption. As A grated as... window sh- flies open as this. Perfect potato of a head with this like little wood shape, 
brown wood shavings haircut on top of it. This, what you assume is a woman, this <laughs> angrily staring about. It's like, someone unauthorized to touch my clothing bags! And that is our cue to keep moving and move faster, says Bundle as he starts. And move faster! <laughs> as, he, as he starts jogging practically. <laughs> uh, I need you to make a deck save real quick. Okay. Oh my god! <laughs> 26! <laughs> Sharon is attempting to throw a punch at you to slow you down, but he missed. So you're just <laughs> running away. Actually, oh, looking more. No. Yeah, you're the fastest moving person in that woman's line of sight. Uh -oh. Bundle panic. Bundle panic. Oh, neat. Bundle Captain Visibility. Just like, and me all share, and you can hear by. Oh, shit. In slow motions, you're like. He's like, God damn it. And, and now the Benny Hill As this starts. woman starts to maneuver her way out of this. This is a very large woman. In oh, all the oh ways. No. Oh, oh no. Maneuvering her way oh out no. of the window. Oh no. Wearing nothing but it seems like a very expansive sack of a nightdress. Oh no. She has oh, like the, the cream on her face too. Oh no. Like and this the, lady the, was in the middle of changing. <laughs> Jesus! This is dedication. She was waiting for her laundry. Point? Apparently. <laughs> and you hear behind you in perfect soldier boy impression. You. <laughs> How close am I to the door? Oh no, you're outside. You're you're outside the keep notary. Okay. The, 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 a barred window outside the notary opened, and this woman peered out. Oh. You're currently in the street. <laughs> um. Is it obvious that I'm the only cat person around? Like I said, you're the fastest moving cat person she sees. Uh oh. Uh, um. <laughs> you panic. You're the only I cat person she sees. Oh, fun. But I'm not running, I am jogging. So, and I'm also in a courier's <laughs> outfit. Alright. Why, why would I have a reason to touch a dress? So as you start jogging a little bit faster and Sharon's swearing behind you, you hear the ground, you feel the ground shake as this woman hits oh the God. floor. What? What? Did she jump out of the fucking window? Oh, she climbed, she climbed climb. out of the window. It was, it was still first floor window. She's just climbing out of it like a... I want her to fall over at some point and start rolling towards Bundle. <laughs> no. no! We're not reenacting re Indiana Jones here. Oh my god! No. You don't even the know Katamari that. Dynasty music starts playing. <laughs> Alright, but, but, but as the ground shake, Sharon immediately books it to you and stares at you. He's like, you're lucky we came up with a plan B. And he immediately tossed. He immediately grabs your shoulders, and I need you to make an acrobatics check as he tosses you both into the canal. Oh my god! Fifteen. <laughs> All right, you, you, you could be more graceful as uh, as you find out in midair why Sharon did notice there was a gondolina right there. However, you just barely missed the check, so. Oh no. So he lands perfectly inside the gondolina. You meanwhile plunge face first into the into the drink. How deep is this water? Uh Let me let me roll a check. Bundle you. It's about 9 foot deep. Is... Oh okay. my god. That's that's not bad. Okay, cuz if it, if it was less than 6 feet, I will I was going to be in trouble. But <laughs> As he Bundle, your first day is going wonderful. Hang on, we're not done yet. <laughs> you gotta remember, I'm also a panther tabaxi, so I am hydrophilic, not hydrophobic. <laughs> so, <laughs> once I get into the water, 
I instinct instinctively start swimming, but don't resurface just yet. Just try to follow the gondola. Are you not? You're trying. Are you trying to break the surface, or are you just trying to follow under the surface? Following under the surface. All right. Make a Constitution check. Oh. Oh no. Check. Well, check. Save. Doesn't matter. Check. Negative one. No matter what happens. Thirteen. That's actually not that bad. Okay. Yeah, you're. You manage to swim along. You're you're dodging the the pole wherever it hits the ground, the the basin bottom as you're like. Whoop, whoop, whoop. After about. 15 seconds though, it's starting to get a little cramped in your lungs because you didn't exactly take a big breath as you headed towards the drink. Alright, am I at least by the boat and can climb into it? Uh, you are about a foot away from it, as you assume, from your positioning and looking up and around your location. Okay, can I use my feline agility to make myself swim faster and hop into the Make it dex check disadvantage. You can do it. Twelve. Okay, you did not properly train yourself in your feline agility for swimming, so you cannot adequately summon up the strength to pull that sort of thing in water at the moment. Okay. Like, you're too short on air to do it. Um, how far have I gone just standard swimming like this, then? Uh, 30 feet. 30 feet? Okay. At this point, I try and resurface, but don't try not to make a huge splash about it. <laughs> the music stopped. Oh, no. Nope. Shit. Bundle Wrong died! One. Wrong Better one. <laughs> but it's like, Jesus, God really? God damn it. <laughs> we told you you were fucking dead. <laughs> Alright. Seriously, you're, you're now, dead. Now, as you're... So you're continuing to follow under the water? I'm going to attempt... Chris, and take a breath. <laughs> break the surface? Alright, as you break the surface... You hear Ch Charon's yelling from the boat. Plan Beta tie! Plan Beta tie! As, as the gondolina operator lifts down and scoops you up and uh, pulls you over to the side where you can grab onto the side of the boat. Mike died. Shit. Gondolina scoop. Yeah. Grabs you and uh, and pulls you towards the side of the boat where you can latch on. All right, I grab on using my cat claws and clamber into the boat. You hear Sharon hiss at you. Easy, easy, you're gonna tip us. This isn't super ballasted. Oh, I just kind of slump into the boat once I'm once I'm able to without tipping it over. And as you're moving yourself out, you see the massive woman about 40 feet away from you. Uh, actually managing to get ahead of the boat some... Well, because she's on land and not traveling on the boatway. She approaches a bridge that she assumes you will have to cross under. She's like... Rrr! And as she's approaching it, you hear a... Ha! As the orange gentle... The orange angular-faced elven gentleman... Runs in front of the the massive potato woman, and the sprite starts circling the woman. Hot <laughs> hit! As as the, the elven father. boy ta takes a shield and starts rolling on the ground in front of the woman, you assume in an attempt to to provide a distraction slash obstacle. Hi, Link. <laughs> Hi, Link. Oh, oh, Jesus, fuck. What the fuck, man? Okay. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I'm gonna roll a deck save for her. It's not great. Oh god, what if she falls in? Oh my god, what? <laughs> she falls in. Yes, that's what a, if they fall? What if she falls in? That's a, that's a heavy Bundle, wow! Bundle's 
God damn. Fucking die. That floats. I can con- I, I know the fat floats. Alright, so she does indeed fail. Now I need to roll what happens next. Oh god. Do I- oh god. So, okay. you see her attempt to skid stop, but she trips, and her foot lands on the the beetle shield boy. Oh no. And she oh. wobbles. There now I'm goes. going to roll to see where she lands. There it goes. We've got to be unbundled. Here it comes. Here it comes. All right. One. Here it comes. I need, I need it to comes. know how much time passes between her stepping on this guy and starting the fall. Uh, if I have more than six seconds, I have an action. <laughs> uh, it's three seconds actually occurs where she lands on him, wobbles, and then falls forward. Her face and arm lean past the underbridge into the water, but her body is still fully on the walkway. Go, 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 go. <laughs> go! Go! Is our gun right here? Oh, no. Smash, smash cut to Dashkin. No what bundles. Smash cut to Feliana. Uh, Feliana. Um. The beetle elf now pulls out a boomerang. <laughs> and is it and is attempting t to use it to wedge the the well woman away from the edge <laughs> what the fuck man? why did you make link <laughs> why is link here <laughs> I believe why? this is his brother, Lonk. <laughs> why would he not? Anyway, continue. Uh, the boomerang is not very effective, I'll say that, but it is causing quite a distraction. Dirge, she's like, You stop! And Murr just wafts her giant, like, backpack sized fist towards the beetle. The Why beetle shield the elf. Why is that the size of a fat pack? Terrified of this woman? You ever see a fat Goliath? Oh god, what yes. if I have. Oh, oh god, what if Phil has to work with this woman? You never know. Help me. Oh, I god mean, damn it, she seems high. like a wonderful person. Okay, so he doesn't. So. Well, hang on. No, that's to hit. So she just she just misses again. Yeah, Jeez. the deck save. Well, no way. I rolled the deck save for him, so that was still a natural two. Okay. Oh boy. So the boy attempts to dodge the the fist by diving her directly into it. Oh no. <laughs> Look at what you did, Bundle. You got Link killed. Maybe. Don't worry, he has a fairy. We are familiar. Yeah, can we please just get through this, guys? Worn out face. And the poor boy just smacks straight into the woman's fist and falls over out cold. He's like, oh my god! Aww. This is so fucking cool! As the sprite goes over and it's like, Starts sprinkling, attempting to wake him up. It's like, no, no, no. Hi, listen! As Wait, the woman is attempting to shake off the dizziness and the disgruntlement and attempting to find her bearings again. Uh, what's your passive stealth? I'm your passive? stealth, your stealth plus ten. Uh, your stealth modifier plus ten. Stealth modifier plus ten, up uh, seventeen. All right. Let's see if you can get a perception. All right. Did she roll a natural 20? She looks to the boat and tries to find you, but you manage to lower yourself just to where only the tips of your claws are at the top half, are like on top of the edge of the boat, and you're just holding yourself on the side like, nope, nope, 
Nope. Nope. <laughs> and she, you can hear an audible sense of confusion from her, like, <laughs> and and Sharon's like, oh no, he swam that away. Points to the rear, and <laughs> let's see if she buys it. I'm waiting for her oh, to yeah, she take off it. like a killer. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank <laughs> fucking god. <laughs> and she just starts <laughs> running in the opposite direction as the god, the hooded gondolina, after about ten good seconds of thump, 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 You can come up now. We're safe. Hey. She's gone. She's you are safe, young child. You are safe. Uh, uh, Bundle just kind of slowly pulls himself up into the boat. <laughs> Lands in the boat. Looks to Sharon and says, "I could have just. I'm I'm pretty fast." <laughs> <laughs> and he just kind of shakes off the water that's on him. <laughs> Dude. But who needs to work on this? Dude, you nearly fucking died. I did not nearly fucking die. You nearly fucking more, died! More, more accurately, he probably nearly got fucking arrested. Eh. Find it would more, be more, like ac it. more accurately. You nearly got fu uh, fucking beat. <laughs> Jesus Christ! That mountain of the wo that mountain of a woman. <laughs> like I said, she's like the size. Th the, from what the description says, she's a hardy lady. But I doubt that she could make it in a marathon. She don't uh, take kindly to no pan of thieves. I didn't steal I anything from her. As far as you know. She just, she got pissy that he touched her laundry. Ooh, I touched a bag. But, anywho. <laughs> what did you I, call her? <laughs> I said I touched a bag. <laughs> Those are my exact words. Yeah, Beliana called mountain. I, uh, I did. <laughs> Because from your description, she sounds like the uh, she sounds like the very thing that haunts me in my dreams. At least a female Gorn. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I'm in the yeah. boat. That really and is so you, you make your way back into the boat, and you're like, Hurr. yeah, you try and sh you shake off your fur. It's like, <laughs> it's like Charon's just sitting there chewing on another stick of Chico, like. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of stupid. You threw me into the drink. <laughs> I didn't touch it. I was I didn't touch it that wasn't on the itinerary. Uh, whatever. Says Bundle as he reaches into his pocket and hands Sharon the uh the, the wrapped up uh seal. Yeah, you pass him the, the brick pack and you attempt to pass him the brick pack. He's like he holds up it. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Nope. This is your quest. You got to You got to see this through, dummy. Uh, dummy. <laughs> dummy. How was I? Eloy. How was I supposed to know that touching a bag would have been the worst thing I could have done? <sighs> you're, you're champing to be a rogue, right? <laughs> I don't want to answer that right now. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, well, that means yes. Familiar faces. <laughs> and uh, the hooded gondolina just keeps pushing and rowing up until about six minutes later, you manage to make it towards a little dock area where you recognize as, oh, wait, this is the entry point to the, to the, the division. The separation. All right. At this point, I uh, see if we can at least slow down the gondola just enough so me and Sharon can get off. Oh yeah, th they do. All right, and how drenched am I? Oh no, you, you shook yourself off mostly. You're 
Your boots are still soaked, but everything else is most is reasonably dry. That reminds uh, me, I have to give you that. I have a cat. At this point, I take the time to pour the water out of my boots before continuing on. Suddenly, stop right there, criminal scum! Stop this criminal act! I'm pouring out water. What's illegal about that? <laughs> You're pouring out delicious water! Out of my boot! I'm not drinking that! <laughs> yeah, you hop on the dock as you're trying to uh, just pour out your stuff. You notice that this is a well-maintained dock. There's not any splinters or nails you need to watch out for. It's just a little wobbly because it's, uh, it's a floating dock. It's not a, a nailed or... Uh, uh, I don't know my English tonight. So good. A, like, set dock. Like, it's actively, like, fluid moving. Gotcha. Well, I, like I said, pour out my boot, make sure it's nice and comfortable again, and even if it starts sloshing, at least that's better than it being a, a swamp. Yeah. After that, uh, Sharon just flicks, flicks a bag, tosses a bag into the gondolina, the hooded figure nods, and continue, and and promptly enters a tunnel and disappears from sight. Where did he come from? Where did he go? Where did he come from? If you say Cotton Eye Joe, Joe, I swear to God. <laughs> Jaren just tapped in and like, ah, oh, come on, come on. Yeah, yeah. So this bundle is. He follows along going towards where the uh, where they came in, to, came in from in the first place. He's finally playing with his fucking toys. Yep, you managed to make your way through the separation. Is as you exit the exit point, the guards are like, "Oh, hold on, gotta gotta check your endpoints, dude. Hold on." Uh, fine. He says as he turns around and produces the seal, which is probably nice and wet now. The seal? Not um. the seal. No, not the seal. The freaking emblem that he had to stand for. Okay. Jeez. <sighs> the emblem that he had stamped before is probably drenched, but he produces it. Alright. So, Jesus. yeah, you're, uh... Yeah, you produce the emblem. It's a little soggy, and, uh guy at the desk with his freckles like kind of smirks a little bit like <laughs> took a little s did you forget to take this out of your pocket before you decided to take decided to take a drink from a trough bundle grits his teeth and says as calmly as he can I had to dodge a very large cart <laughs> hmm there's only one there's only one or two of them in there, so that, that's oddly bad luck. All Some right. would say it was a mobile brick house. Yeah, the guy inspects it and uh, sprinkles a powder on the seal and stamps it next to the, the waxen paper again and... Uh, and then uh, brushes something, brushes a, a calligraphic rune onto the second half of your wax paper. He's like, there you go. All right, now just, I guess, be safer. Yeah, watch out. There's a few more carts out here than there are in there. Enjoy. It says bundle as he takes back his emblem and puts it in his pocket and heads towards the florist guild. All right, yeah, you make it back all fine. There's like... There's a parade of children riding pigs as you approach the florist guild. Just like, like a dozen, like about thirteen kids, all with these uh, little uh, pointed, uh, pointed caps, riding a, a parade of pigs. I want to ride a pig. Spotted pigs, 
plain pink pigs, fuzzy white pigs. Doesn't that sound fun, Phil? All chirp, chirping and snorting happily. I love it. Bundle sees all of this and sa th says, he says absentmindedly to himself, gotta ask about that later. <laughs> but the pigs. And uh, heads towards the door of the florist guild. Yeah, you enter the florist guild and Charon looks around inside. It's it's just the two the two women at the desk just absentmindedly playing with pots. And they look up Oh yeah, you need Sorry. uh you need to head out back. Verb. Still there, Brett. I I I died, didn't I? Yeah, you did. Yeah. All right, the, the lady looks up from playing with her pots and says, Oh, yeah, you need to head out back, and points to the curtain at the tail end of the shop. Well, nods, heads out, to the back. Yeah, you, you make your way through the shop and uh, go behind the curtain, and there's N sitting there uh, reading a newspaper. Uh, it's like, just like his little halfling legs propped up on a, on a stool, cheerfully chewing away at like a pretzel. Just hanging out of his mouth like a cigar. I step towards him. Is there a table between me and him? Nope, he's just sitting there like on a reclining stool. Alright. I uh, greet him in Thieves' Cant. Mm-hmm. How'd it go? <sighs> it went well, but could have gone much, much better. I say as I produce the seal and and uh, in, I'll produce the seal on my paw, holding it out to him. He looks at the package. Why is there blood flex on it? I had to improvise. Charon uh, peeks in through the window and is like, Yeah, he, uh, he didn't wear any gloves. So, he shouldn't have. He was only going to a desk and picking up a package. He, there are no doors to touch. Well, you see says Bundle as he starts to tell what happened. After, like, two minutes of explanation, he just furrows his brow like, you want to join a rogue skill, you want to learn the thieving arts, and the first thing you do in your first job is you don't wear gloves and touch something that you really don't want to leave your traces of. <sighs> I thought helping out a a gnome would be uh, the dichotomy of taking something that doesn't belong to someone. You know, figured it would balance everything out. Didn't know it was doing a good deed would cause so much trouble for me. Yeah, well, good deeds have gotten a lot of rogues killed over the course of their lives. Uh, noted. All right, but the distraction worked. How is how is Ty doing, by the way? Charon shrugs like I still can under still can understand a damn word he says, but he's uh he's doing okay. Uh we'll 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 send the the, the uh, chariot to pick him up in a little while. Chariot. I get it. The chariot. Yeah, he, yeah, he's uh, kinda kinda out cold. Jesus, really? He did take one hell of a fist to the face. Oh God, today's just not working at all. All right, you got the seal. He uh, spins his finger around the package, and it folds out like an orchid. And there's the brick. And he he opens his mouth, pulls out uh like a lock pick from between his teeth like a toothpick and just mm. taps the brick with it and it splits into six even pieces as he rifles through like aha uh -huh, and pulls out like a a 
a wax scroll along with a long wooden implement hidden in between it, which we assume is the seal. Yeah, that... Yeah. This is a... This thing is quite some sturdy magic to get out of the... Get out of the keep seat without being noticed. Took us months to get this right. That does leave me with a few questions that I'm probably not going to get answered right away, but I at least have them noted. Are one of the questions where to buy gloves? That is actually at the top of the list. Phil <laughs> knows a guy. <laughs> You know you work for a florist guild, right? And and the answer is right there in front of me. Yeah, you look you look to like a table on the corner, and there's just littered with gardening gloves and shit. Bundle just picks up a pair and says, "How much do I owe you?" No, yeah, we'll take it out of your first. We'll just add it to your dues. Joy, he says, "Bundle as he." Puts the gloves on. <laughs> yeah, and just chews a bit more of the pretzel, swallows. It's like, yeah, you uh, you really need some work. Given that that was your first uh, basic point A, point B job, and there were still complications. Uh, okay. So you want to learn the roguish arts. With little incidences like that happening as possible, yes. No. No, you don't. You want to learn the science of being a rogue. Rogue is not an art, it's a science. Well then, Professor, school me. Oh, honey. No. He slips the seal scroll into into a pouch on it, under his seat, and... Steps off the stool, walks over to you, and says, Like I said, I'm looking for people I can trust and depend on. And uh, right now you're at a coin flip. Compared to Charon over here, who... The worst thing I can remember him doing is leaving the toilet seat up. Bundle. That monster. He gives him a look at that. <laughs> Do you know how wide a toilet bowl is? Wide enough. <laughs> is this implying Ed fell all the way into a toilet? Yes. Yes. And Bundle... <laughs> Bundle doesn't laugh. He understands. You don't... You don't do that to a halfling. You don't do that to anybody. And Bundle just kind of shrugs and says, I don't know what else you want me to do to prove that I'm... I want you to get your act together and come back in a couple days. And we'll see about getting you more fixed up. Hopefully by then, we'll have finagled a way to accelerate your process. But, most likely... We accelerate your process by a few hours, not really a few days, as, as we previously thought. Well, progress is progress, I suppose. Alright. Now. Are we taking those clothes from you? As the this shadowy, pale form appears in the corner of the, uh, the woman, <coughs> the woman Serspira, Yes, I require your bardings now. Bundle looks looks at Spira, looks to N, and just sighs and starts to strip. Not he <laughs> won't. No, well, at least he's getting the hang of it of how open he has to be with us. And uh, that, <laughs> as you start stripping, Suspira tosses your bundles at you. She has uh, neatly folded your vest, your your pantalones, your your shoulder guards, all into a nice little into nice little uh, quiver-like bundles. They're also dry cleaned. Their bill is in your pocket. Right. 
They smell faintly of tobacco smoke. <laughs> hmm. where, where are these? He says as he starts putting his clothes back on. That sounds... Uh, that's like a week three where you get to learn that stuff. Fair enough. He says as he Andre? starts buttoning up his shirt again, putting on his vest. Yeah, so, uh... I appreciate your willingness to work on such short notice. We just need to get your improvisation skills a bit better at the moment. Also, we need to get you to learn how to how to defend yourself in uh, melee combat because while rogues do do their best to try and stay away from every from being in close combat, you got to prepare for the worst. And the way I see it, those claws might be able to, might be able to. Uh, <coughs> mildly dent something uh, you would encounter but well you'd be prepared so we're gonna set you up with uh we're gonna set you up for cant cant studies and uh get your uh your cunning set up that'll work i'm already good enough with a bow i need to be better with a blade i suppose Again, I appreciate what you did. I just feel we need... I'm just telling you right now, you need a lot of improvement. Because well, I'll, I'll be fair, I wouldn't hire you for a Bowery position at this point. Oh, well, will you at least hire me as a janitor? He says in a joking manner as he straps his, uh, his, <laughs> his uh, quiver of arrows back on his back. That reminds um, me. That reminds me. Looks to Sharon. Go fix that toilet. He's like, <laughs> like, oh, fine, fine. Jeez, God. Uh, like, yeah, you're uh, you're dismissed. I appreciate it, but uh, yeah, come back here. Uh, don't come back tomorrow. Come back the next day, and we'll have it. We'll have your ports. Your port specifically ready by like first light. Hell, if you pop by before the shop's open, you're probably even gonna get even luckier. Who knows? Maybe we'll get to meet the rest of the mob. Maybe you'll finally meet Ty. Who the hell knows? We're we're very tightly scheduled, and yet at the same time we're also very improv improv improvise improvisational. Seems seems to be the uh, the way of things. Maybe then I'll bring a bring some fruit to celebrate. He says as he starts to make his make make his way out. I, and again, thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And thank you for your services. You are now missing an additional ten GP. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he gave you a, like a smack on the ass as you went out. So you assume that's when he took it. Okay, Damn so that's 25, yeah. that's... Yeah, the, we've got a quarter of your dues now taken care of for the week. Grand. We now have 215 gold now. We need to get, like, a, some sort of safe established. So we're not right. just carrying that stuff around on us. But once I'm out of the Florist Guild and back onto the street, I'm... I'm assuming it's lunchtime, right? Indeed. Well then, bundles. And you can going... see the you can see the pig parade just maneuvering its way out into the gateway district just ahead of you. You hear the cheers of the children. Yay! Dun, go, dun, private dun, pickles, go! So you're gonna look for some lunch real quick. Um, you gonna go visit like a food a food cart or something, or are you just gonna go back to the the key? the fortress and uh make yourself some weenies or something uh bundle was gonna actually stop by the the nearby the closest market and uh get some food for him and for anyone else that might be still at the fortress you look at your temporary pass and you do indeed realize you still have 90 minutes with you get where which you can enter the the social district oh shit ah. well then bundle's gonna go ahead and get some fruits and vegetables since they already have enough meat Oh yeah, uh, guys, I'm gonna have to go. Alright. I'll I'm send you, I'll send you the video to... link. I'll post this and render this real quickly for you. 
Thank All you. Right, uh, but I'm pretty. Uh, but I'm pretty sure there wasn't going to really be much my part in this. Uh, yeah, session. it was mostly going to be dash yes. and bundle with a little bit of Rania and you sprinkled in. Um, I'll just say that you finish your meal and you go meet up with Rania after you uh, finish your meal at the Learned Boar. Yeah. Have a good night, Phil. And uh, well, I'm just trying. Uh, well, I'm just trying to make it so in the way that I don't anger my mom, but I also don't get to miss out on. The I, get I get it. I get it. It's all perfectly fine. Yeah. Sorry, guys, but yeah. I'll I'll uh, have my shit together better next time. It's okay. I'll have my shit together. <laughs> Bye, guys. We'll all be Here shitting together very soon. Later. We're all shit in the same pot. Ah. All right, so yeah, you you had a yeah. Uh, you said you're gonna go look for like some food to buy. Are, are you going grocery shopping or are you gonna go like meal shopping? Like you're gonna get yourself lunch or you're gonna get yourself food for later as well. Uh, are you going to a market or are you going to like a cafe or a restaurant? A uh, cafe or a restaurant. Okay. Yeah. So you enter the. Uh, the lesser merchants there uh the cuisine guild in uh the lesser merchants area where like by the orchard and all that there is actually a, a college of cuisine <coughs> there that has like a little cafe where the students attempt to make dishes as well as you remember from the from the previous excursion in the middle guild there are two taverns in the middle social district okay and there's also a gambling hall but you're not so sure about that at the moment. Yeah, but Bundle needs, no, Wait. He needs to keep a, a tighter grip on the money for right now. Would exactly. It, would it Bundle see Dash near the gambling? I think he's mostly, he's mostly just looking for food right now, so I'd say he's doing a rushed perception check rather than anything else. Yeah. Okay. Like, if you see him, yeah, go ahead and poke him, but he's looking for food. All right, so yeah, you see the two taverns in the middle district, and in the lesser district, there's the uh, the cuisine guild like practice cafe. Mm. Uh, student bundle, chefs, gun, bundle shrugs. Student chefs are probably cheaper, so we're gonna go there. Oh yeah. All right. All right Chef you... and turf by eight bucks. Yeah, you make your way to the uh, to the cuisine guild. Where it says the uh, the title of the place is where is that table? I'm great at making these tables, tables, tables. So many tables. All of the tables. Oh boy, I do like tables. Tables are nice. I like a nice oak table. Dirty. Yes. 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 Alright. Although mahogany is also good for tables. Also desks. Mm -hmm. Mahogany. <laughs> so uh, the the cuisine guild's restaurant is called the Singing Tome. The singing Tome, okay. And there's just this acne-faced boy who's just sitting. There. Actually, an acne-faced uh, blonde-haired girl sitting there at like the the uh, greeting station. And it's like, hello. Welcome to the uh, the singing tome. I'm I'm hmm. Marisha, and today uh, our special is uh, sc is harvest sc squash souffles, as well hmm. as we have a delicious uh, short uh, a spiced short ribs uh, platter if you're interested, as well as the typical sandwiches, soups, and uh, various artisanal breads we specialize in here at the Singing Tome. Ha! Would you like to seat 
out on the veranda or in the in, in the candlelit interior? I think I worked with this girl before. Bundle thinks about it as he peruses the menu and says, eh, I'll, I'll take the veranda. Just look, people watch for a little bit while I'm eating. Okay, okay. Uh, follow me, please. Grabs a little uh, papery menu and walks you out towards the veranda where they have an assortment of metal tables and uh, wooden fabric chairs set out for uh, seating and uh, and cuisining. So she leads you to uh, a table right in the middle of the veranda. So it's like it's a, a metal. Uh, it's almost like it's it's a it's a metal table, but it's made in the process of like wicker, where it's like interlinking uh, mm -hmm. materials make the table, especially the top oh, portion. Oh. Neat. Then you sit on the fabric chair. It's it's pretty comfortable. It, yeah, it's like a, it's like a director's chair. Like that sort I know of like, how that process works. That must have took some time. It possibly <laughs> did. But uh, w once he's uh, sees the seating, he's going to sit down and fully relax and uh, just wait for his meal to come in. He orders the, uh, the short ribs, short rib platter. Okay, mm. okay. She takes the... Uh, Marisha I'm takes your it. order and says... Okay, we'll have that out to you in just uh, about ten minutes. And uh, in the meantime, uh, would you like a uh, an ale, a uh, sparkling cider, some uh, a cider. choice uh, choice wheat water? It's uh, it's basically their equivalent of mineral water. Like he puts up two fingers and says, "Fresh water, ale." <laughs> excellent, excellent. I'll be right back. And she disappears inside for about forty-five seconds, and comes back with a pitcher and a pitcher, two glasses, and a can, and flops it right down. Uh, opens the can, pours it out, nice, nice, sturdy, where it gets a nice head. It, it gets so much that she actually asks you if you can take a sip of the ale, so she can finish emptying the can to the glass. He does so. It's very hearty, very, very hearty. Tastes. Very much like stone ground, like oats is the texture mm. you're getting from this ale. But mm. yeah, you you take a full sip, and she manages to pour out the rest of it before the head overflows the the lip, and is like, okay, and then pours out. Would you like ice in your water, or just uh, just plain uh, plain water? Just plain water. Okay, and uh, just taps the pitcher and pours out this crystal clear just pure ambrosia nectar that is the artisanal water. And uh, mm. Bundle thanks her for, for her time and says oh and that's for the food take your time and uh, I like it. I like them nice, tender and almost falling off the bone. Indeed. Uh, be back soon. And wanders away as as you enjoy the people watching. Walking by you see uh uh, a man in a uh, salt and a man with a salt and pepper beard, walking by with this like uh, patchwork apron, and he's uh, trailing seed behind him, and these little pigeons and uh, and uh, swallows are following him, like just as he's walking along. You you can't tell if he knows he's attracting the birds with the seed from his pocket, or whether he's just. One of those characters just like he doesn't know he has a hole in his pocket and the, the comedic shenanigans that ensue <laughs> but also there are uh, a few children a few elven children with their mother in the sundress walking around they monster monster look the, the, the circus is coming the circus is coming yes eh. yes yes my child yes yes i see if you're good you can if you are good, you may you may go to it. Circus. Circus. Bundle immediately looks to see where this kid's pointing at. He point he points to a little uh, uh a little uh scroll scroll bound poster of this man of this dwarf with this elaborate impossible mustache with a uh, little bowler hat like as as it's animated to show like doves are flapping out of it and in the background of the poster you can see a a horse with 
with with a mane made of fire and a uh, an acrobat shimmering sparkles in the background as it says as it advertises the the duty free circus spectacular coming to your touring now does that circus spark anything in bundle's head does it does it yes it does that was the rival circus to your to your outfit there were two circuses in this land that that you were aware of one of them was the one you were a part of which was the uh giacomo uh, circus guild and then you got then you had the duty free circus spectacular which was known for having a for going a bit more uh big with their uh showcases like you guys are very down to earth very much while they were the other one was very much about the spectacle hmm. seeing that he he is he sparks it, like you see sparkles in his eyes when he sees the circus and then when he realizes it's the it's the other circus he's like oh mm. <laughs> And uh, kind of drained, drains most of his water. It's like, well, at least I'll know probably a few of those degenerates. But uh, memories, good memories, all the same, I suppose. Yes. There's a dog. Uh, a cat's a cat wanders around the corner and starts chasing a dog. This this little like toy dog is like. Ow, ow, ow. <laughs> This is like <laughs> like uh, this orange colored cat just starts chasing this little toy dog around, and you can a very portly man stumbles out of a of a of the outhouse, going like, "Oh no, cuddles, get back here!" And is struggling to get his belt just right as he's taking off running after the dog. No, like, oh, no. The bundle can't help but chuckle at this. <laughs> And after a few moments, you you take a few more sips of your beer, your ale. There's a there's a traveling bard going around with this uh, sort of like one man band get up where he has uh, a washboard that he's using as like instrumentation, as well as a pair of accordions underneath his armpits, which he's like fluctuating every now and then to tell the tales of the. The tales of the unknown fortress. At, at this bundle scribbles down and, down <coughs> and he holds it up as uh, high as he can. It says seven out of ten. <laughs> yeah, but you can uh, roll a, a history check real quick. Okay. To see if you recognize this song. That is a good, good the point. Binding tale. I uh, probably don't know it. Yeah, this tale is new to you. You did not know of this tale of uh, a pair of legendary warriors, uh, Rogan the Fearless and Zeligar the Unknown, who, uh, who a centuries, it seems like a, cent a century or two ago, they were the most legendary adventurers in the realm. One was a fierce fighting warrior. The other one was a very cunning ma magic user and it tells the tale of how after years of making their own legends they joined forces and disappeared for a while rumors spread about how they would they were building a fortress out in the out in the wilderness and when suddenly about about a decade after they disappeared a barbarian horde threatened to invade from the north the north the northeastern lands and the the cities just one the bard says in between towns. So, oh well, oh well, where are the heroes we need? As the chorus keeps repeating and refraining, as he keeps drumming on the percussion to imitate the sounds of the barbarian horde approaching and approaching, and finally he says, "For they came to save the town from them." As he tells of the barbarians being banished by the two heroes joining forces once again after a long respite from from uh, adventuring only to dis disappear once again to go after the barbarians after they took leave upon being uh, routed 
at a great battle in in a canyon to the south. Mm. And how the 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 bard's song ends with him stating how no word has come back of their their continuing adventures. Who knows if they live, or or what secrets their their uh, hidden fortress could hold for whoever seeks it out. Bundle actually takes note of that. Uh, maybe that could be if that is a true if that is a true tale. It could be something to look something to look into. The names seem familiar. Like I, I feel like I've seen those names before. Mm, curious. Like you can't place it. Like yeah, I guess that sounds like a name that would. It doesn't sound like. It doesn't sound like Luke Skywalker realmed the galaxy doing this. Like like us in the real world. Like Luke Skywalker's not a real name. Right. Like Rogan the Fearless and Zelligar the Unknown. What were the names? Rogan the Fearless and Zelligar the Unknown. Give me a second. I'm gonna copy it. Ha! I got Rogan right. <laughs> Zelligar the Unknown. And their hidden fortress to the that that the bard even says no one really knows where the the their wilderness fortress was only if they disappeared uh, after passing through a valley they could have gone south they could have gone east they could have gone across they could have gone around the Gulf who knows but but someday perhaps their secrets will be revealed and the the the, the children and their and the handler of the bard there's there's like a handler of the bard like this uh this goblin gentleman in this ratty little suit coat is like yeah good kid good kid with a cigar hanging out I'm like yeah good yeah walking around with a with a uh like box like yep yeah, pens yeah pens for the pens for the for the bard sustenance you know why we need it guys he's doing a great to to uh, entertain y'all how close am I to these two? He's passing around the crew. Like he started off towards the uh, the gateway area, like about twenty feet away, and he's starting to move around like in a semicircle, gradually moving towards the cafe. Okay. As like he gets cl once he gets close enough, I'm going to hail them over, hail the goblin over, and uh, hand him th uh, three gold. All right. Like, tip. He tips his brow. Like, thank you, thank you, sir. And at that moment, the uh, the waitress returns with uh, Marisha with your short ribs platter, and it comes uh, with a uh, a siding of grazed of glazed asparagus and green beans. Hmm. It's like in a uh, in like an oil and vinegar type solution. It's very briny. Looks looks uh, delectable. And uh, thank you, fun. sir. Uh, Enjoy. If you need anything else, I'll be uh, I'll be wandering around every couple of minutes. Much appreciated. He says with a with a nod and a smile and starts to eat. Mm hmm. Those ribs are very tender. Oh yes. <laughs> yep. The bones are also very tender as you as you go to town. One such rib that the that the rib actually splits in two. The bone. It's like oh huh. And some, and to your surprise, a little bit of marrow s dribbles out. Yeah, he starts eating the, the meat, and once the uh, most of the meat's gone, he starts gnawing at the bone to get at the marrow. Yeah, you 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 kept a good time. Strange enough, the thing you appreciate most about the meal is the beans, the that that brine and like the texture, just perfectly melded. It's like wow, this is the perfect savory snack I wanted to complement with this greatly sweet. Uh, rib mixture. It was like the perfect compliment. Like it almost overshadows the, the main course. Hmm. Well, once he's done eating, he's gonna call for the check and uh, compliment the sh compliment whoever uh, c cooked the meal. The Marisha nods enthusiastically. Like I'll be sure to tell the 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 the. 
the back presents all about your your wonderful comments. You can even leave a comment card if you wish, sir. And oh. hands you the bill and it's like, please give a five star on Yelp. So, so happy. Glad you enjoyed. Yes. Uh, how much do I owe? Do do do. do. You owe six silver pieces for the meal, and you owe eight silver total, so six for the meal and two for the drink. Okay, so here's what he's going to do. He's going to reach into the bag that has all of our silver. He pulls out 25 silver. He, pay, he puts down the eight for the meal. He puts down the... 17. Hang on, I'm, 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 I'm rashing it out. He puts down four for her for as a waitress, because tips, it's how, how they live. And then... That's only in America, though. Maybe they actually pay her well. I was going to say, that's a 200% tip. Is it? No. Yeah, eight silver total, and you're paying 25. Hang on, then. He's like, Jesus! I want to buy your services. I want to buy your restaurant. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Oh, no. And he oh. puts... It, hang on, I gotta re rethink this then. He, put, he puts he, down the eight for the meal, two silver for her services as a, as a waitress, mm -hmm. and then puts down four silver and says, this is for the people in the back. Tell them to keep up the good work, because if they do so, they're gonna... They might find themselves a... A uh, work at a very fine restaurant. Yeah, that's a twenty-five percent tip for her and a fifty percent tip for them. Not bad. Get the name of the restaurant and the school. I I have the name of the restaurant and the school. Thank you very much. The singing tome. Good. Anyway, she she blushes a little bit. Her her, her cheeks go a bit white. She's like, oh, "Thank you, sir. H have a um, pleasant pleasant day." Don't mention it," he says as he as he brushes himself off if there's any food bits left on him, and uh, goes to see where where everyone else might be at. All right, and as soon as you get up, we're gonna quick. Do we want to take a quick break or do we want to continue blazing on through? Uh, quick uh, break so I can go pee real quick. All yeah, right. I think some we're gonna of us need to take a quick that. break. We'll be back in just a few moments. So. We're going, going to, to pick up with <coughs> Dashigan stuff. Three. So Dashigan, uh, last time you had left off uh, scoping out the Croker's playpen in hopes of catching a glimpse of someone you remember from your mercenary days. Yep, the uh, half orc quartermaster named Ken. Yep. And as you uh, just park outside, you find a brick wall you can lean up against all, like, masculine-like, and just cross your arms, just keep an eye out for something. There's a... There's a little man wearing a... wearing a kettle for a headdress, like, soup for sale? Anyone want some soup for sale? Your day's special is vegetable rice? Soup for sale? Anyone? Dash again thanks to himself. If there's meat, I would go for that, but there's no meat. Yeah, Dash is just gonna keep waiting and keep an eye out. Yeah, it's it's fairly busy here in the mid sector. There's some uh there's some uh, a trio of dwarves that are just trying to make a mule move. It's like Come on, you blasted mule! We've got to get a move on! Come on! Just trying to shove it. Do everything except for beat the thing into moving its emission. Almost like they're trying to make a point of it. And the mule is being very stubborn, like moving like... Like... Two inches. Three inches. It's like, oh, come on! I gotta do this thing! And... It's it's drawing quite the ire of the crowd. Especially the... The, the traffic flow behind them is just getting kind of irate. Dash, and oh, go ahead. Yeah. 
I was gonna say Dash sighs and goes over to see if he can help uh, get the meal to cooperate animal handling Jack. How would you want to make the meal cooperate is the question. Does it look like it's irate or anything? Uh, roar wisdom check. Wisdom or investigation? Uh, definitely wisdom. <laughs> it's moving particularly slowly. Yeah. Yeah, it could be for a number of things. It could be hurt. It could be uh, just tired. It could just be a mule acting on its inner instincts. Who knows? Meh. Uh, I approach and say, uh, mind if I try helping? I shout, Miss. Shy, Mr. Snoutman, please get this thing moving. We've got a shipment to meet at the gates! Alright, I want to try to see if I can gently co gently and not violently coax it into moving with an animal handling chick. Like, trying to say, easy, easy, come on. So you're just trying to u use your voice and your, uh, like, movements to move it along? Yeah, and like, petting it a bit to see if I can calm it. Okay, uh, roll an animal handling check. Not when 18. you punch it. Alright. Mm -hmm. Eventually you just massage its legs a little bit just to kind of like see if it's like the muscles are loose anymore. And you eventually just are able to make it move its pace, uh, triple its pace a little bit. So now it's moving a good like, a, a good foot every step. It's like, there we go. It's like making a bit more headway. The door's like, oh, thank God. God damn it, it's on the way! I kind I kind of in your... It's like just muttering in Dwarvish and exclamations and high common like, Oh God! By the God's beards, thank you! Let's, no problem. Let's hope the blessings come on you and may your ale be forever hearty. <laughs> I just had a stupid thought. <laughs> I just Stop. had a re stupid... Stop it. D D Dash again nods yeah. and offers a smile. Take care. Indeed. And as they move forward, the couple of people give you a slight applause. <laughs> you know, like a few human women just like, oh, that was so good. Yes. And you go back to your wall, and there's a. Uh, and you just keep an eye on that croaker's play plan. Like, there's no one you can <coughs> see, you can recognize from the moment. And after a few moments, you notice this smell wafting over you, like old hay and maybe a little bit of cow pat mixed in. And she's like, ugh. Yeah. Okay, I look around for the source of the smell. As you look around, there is this, this man with this salt and pepper beard just sitting on top of a barrel. About a good uh, ten feet away from you, just like absolutely kicking his feet. <laughs> You're my diet. I only caught part of it. Uh, yeah. As you search around for the smell, any better? Yes. Searching around for the smell, you eventually catch a glance of a figure with this uh worn down fabric of a hat and this uh uh like grubby salt and peppery beard with these uh. Just whole, like, holy and ratty overall. Just kicking his bare feet over the hood of a barrel. He's sitting on top of it. He's like, do 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 do. Oh, Bo Bill, gonna make a good do do do. do. Oh, fuck it. Dash has nothing better to do. So he, he approaches this. Alright. As you want, uh, I, need, I need you to quick make. A history check with advantage as you make Today's your way towards this man. Today's episode six. Dash Please tell me this is who I think it is, though. Mm. Your brain is kicking you like, like, you should know this man. Why don't you recognize this man? While you're, while Dashkin is like, huh? 
Mm-hmm. And this guy just keeps mumbling. Says, <laughs> takes a takes a wad of what you can assume is meat out of his pocket, and it starts what? chawing on it. <laughs> Build a whole uh, boat. I, 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 I think I know who exactly this is, but I can't remember his. Even I can't remember his name because it's been so long since I sent him. Master Oshi. Hey, uh, pardon. Have I seen you somewhere? Have I met you somewhere before? Hey. Turns around. Huh? He's got some broken goggles over his face, like something he probably just fished out of the trash. It's like plastic, all broken. There's not even any lenses left. Is it? Like, yeah. Thinks you've met. Thinks you've met Bill the Hobo. You think? Huh? I assume that jogs my memory. Hearing his name. You do remember, on one occasion, while you and your crew were passing through, you did encounter a very eccentric human with a very grubby beard who kept talking about himself in the third person as Bill as Bill the Hobo, or Hobo Bill, as the crew went on to call him. Oh shit, Hobo Bill. Did we? Huh? huh? This... Bill the Hobo you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, m- me and my crew met you once. Uh, how you been? How your crew? How you make it ra- oh, Bill the Hobo hasn't been on the seas for years. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, you should have uh, remembered us. A bunch of mercenaries uh, carried around coins like this. I show him the uh, Phoenix medal. The uh, Phoenix. Oh, money story. for money for Hobo Bill. You're too generous, <laughs> sir. <laughs> uh, it's not money. It's an iron coin, literally worth. Getting Bill the Hobo's hopes up. <laughs> Hobo hopes. Uh, ah. uh, how's the information business t- treating you? Well. Uh, pardon me, duh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, tight. Pardon, Hobo Bill. Bill the Hobo always finds ne- juicy tidbits to spread around for those who want it. You must be a uh, Gin the Dash. A dash again. Yeah, Gin the Dash. I'm pretty sure it's Close enough. the Dash. <laughs> you know, there is actually. A- you look taller! And is that a new throat I spy? What? How the hell would he know that? <laughs> Good enough. He is wearing goggles, so who knows? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've had it for a while now. Um, tell me, uh, you don't remember? You haven't seen a half orc, uh, elder, an elderly half orc fellow uh, named Kent around, have you? Hmm. Orcish halfling? Elder fellow? Perhaps Bill the Hobo has! Oh, I know how this song and dance goes. How much is the info gonna cost? Hmm. Bill the Hobo scratches his head. Some flakes come out from where he scratches. <laughs> So, you, you, you're not sure if it's like dandruff or wood shavings or something, but it's just like, whoa, whoa, I did not expect that. This whole world needs I really shoulders. like how you set this character up. <laughs> hmm. Well, as fine and dandy as you are, Bill the Hobo has not been entertained in a while. And you know what solves the entertainment thirst better than anything? Bloodshed! <laughs> Uh... Bill the Hobo wants to go to the sink! <laughs> What's the sink? Forgive me, I knew it. You've been in the red day. port and you don't know about the sink? What is wrong with you, young... Young... Uh, lizard... Boy? You've got to go to the sink with Bill the Hobo! It's amazing! Them... Then most glad of it, then most gladiators are so 
presumptuous and flumptuous and uh, quite scrumptious sometimes too with all those juicy bits. But still, um, <laughs> um, in the back of Dashkin's mind, he's just screaming like trunks from Dib DBZ Bridge. <laughs> yes, yes, Bill the Hobo wants to go to the sink. And he points to a uh, a sunken uh, little pit beside uh, a little amphitheater set beside Croker's playpen that descends downward with a little wooden sign that says, Behold the sink, your, na your friendly neighborhood arena for arena sports. Of course, in parentheses. Well, if that's the cost of the info, I don't see why not. Yes, yes, aha! Bill the Hobo appreciates this. Who knows? There might well, be even more excitement on the plateau today. Well, let's go ahead and head over then. Yep. You guys make your way through the busy square, and it's like, oh, I want to stick by the crocus plane, but I don't have that much money to get in there anyway. It's like, and you approach the sink, and as it turns out, there are a lot more people at the sink because the sink is cheaper and doesn't have an entry fee. Well, it has an entry fee, but it doesn't have a st as it doesn't have like a cover charge that the the Croker's playpen costs in addition. Oh, so I straight up could have entered Croker's playpen any. Well, you could. You had to pay for it though. Okay. It's like an amusement park where you had to you had to, you had to pay for entry. Fair Same enough. with the sink, but it's much cheaper. It's like Croker's play, Croker's playpen. It's like, yeah, it's gonna be like four gold. Oh yeah. Meanwhile, the sink is like six silver, please. What do you know? I have six silver exactly in my inventory right now. And I, I hand you over. Can't buy yourself a pencil, oh. but oh wait, is that for the both of us? Or yes. For... Both of us. It, 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 the total, yes. Well, by hand over six silver. The the green haired uh hat the green haired half elf, not splightly, tears off two paper tickets and hands them to you both. And Bill the Hobo's like, Yee! the blood will spill and hobo and the hobo will bill. Aha! <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> what kind of monster have you turned this character into? <laughs> I take what, I took what you gave me. Fair enough. What the hell, Dash? You've, you've made this monstrosity. I kept it as vague as possible to give the DM room to work with. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, yep. we he, head on He's in. rather tall for a halfling, too. Who, Bill? Yeah. Yeah. He's like got he was really long legs considering he's a halfling. Okay. Like he's almost as tall as two Ranyas. <laughs> Jesus. Maybe one and a half, but. He's like, hee hee! Bill the hobo! And he goes over, he goes to one of the stands, he's like, ooh, ooh, ooh! I want some salted peanuts! Uh, how much for the peanuts, I ask. Yeah, the stand. <laughs> Do you have money for the peanuts? The, I have the, gold. the pink tiefling one that stands like, that'll be. <gasps> Ooh! You can I... see his. You can see his face turn a little green as you realize, oh yeah, Bill the Hobo standing next to him. Hmm. Um. Blink. Blink, blink. How much for the peanuts? The stench. Your mic must have cut out. The uh, stench. Yeah, um... The, the, the pink tiefling turns a little green because of the stench that Hobo Bill is emitting. Noted. <laughs> what? Bronze silver. What'd he say? One silver. Can you break a gold piece? <laughs> Takes the gold, throws it in the canister, throws down nine silver. Please give away. 
I take the peanuts and I bring Bill away. Yay! Apparently, nuts for apparently the nutty! Dash, apparently Dash is used to this kind of smell. If we can, like, well, like, capture some of his scent, we could use that. <laughs> We've got to set a trap for Hobo Bill. God damn it, Rocky. Yeah. Yeah. Rocky was sitting that? outside with, like, a with like a stick in a box. Like, come on, come on. <laughs> God damn it, Rania! That's <laughs> bad. We could use that. We could use the services. But we are not making out of Bobo Bill. <laughs> That's illegal. Just get some olive oil, slather it on them. Jesus. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> oh, why am I the weird one? Who made this guy? I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I give Bill his goddamn peanuts. <laughs> <laughs> Salty nuts, nuts for salt. <laughs> and he walks over to the to the edge of the amphitheater. He's like, <laughs> "Good seats, seats for good Bills." Um, ooh, over there. And he points over to the little pads where he's just right in between a but right in between between a group of school children with a little like pig headdresses like little like a uh, like bonnets that look pink and have like little pig ears and even like a curly twirl on the back and a group of very old elderly women with like bonnets like like mrs looking like mrs gulch from wizard of oz like all this big thick black dresses straw bonnet spectacles hmm are these spectators or combatants? These are spectators. these are uh, the, this is the the crowd. Okay. Oh. Yeah, the, currently on the it's battlefield, they are currently cleaning up. There's like a bunch of like uh reasonably look reasonable looking humanoids with like large extensive brooms uh, sweeping up some like discarded armor and uh, occasional hand and. Uh, Trying to clean up the arena best as they can. Mm. Okay. <laughs> violence well, for violence sake! What bones today will break! Woohoo! So, Bill, can you tell me where I can find Kench? Kench! The name that rhymes with stench! Yes. A uh, half or gamble. Lucky for you, I say today, that. Kencha Master also likes play. Yeah. He should be around. Just around this general area. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He he run, he spends his he spends his breaks in between watching violence scene to scene. I immediately start looking around for Kench. As you take your seats in between these school children and these old women, the women all their faces turn puce. And, <laughs> oh and the school moms with the children are staring at the children like, what did you do? It's like, it, it wasn't me. Blame it on the child. Blame it on Like the, the child's like, what? 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 <laughs> of course. Bond's reaction to this character so far. I'll be liking it. Ah. And I quote, dot dot, just... But yeah, while we're, while we're waiting, I'm immediately looking around to see if I can find a familiar... Uh, perception check. 17. All right. You you look at the area you're in and this this amphitheater is not died. huge. Your mic died. Hello? Hello. Hello. Be back. Testing, testing. Gladiators arenas. You're good. good. All right. So, as you survey your area, you realize this isn't a huge amphitheater. This is like a few like a, about 24 yards across in total. 
So, it's only like a... Like a... Uh, 8 by 8, like a, uh, like a, like it's only 23 feet by 23 feet, uh, the, the sink arena, and it's like a, and like there's like a, a good like a 5 or 6 rows deep of amphitheater for this area, and as you partake, you don't see your, your horkish uh, gentleman you're seeking yet. But you get the idea that, okay, so this is like prime break time area, so he should be around soon, seeing as we're at the tail end of the lunch break, and he'll probably show up. All right, Hoobah Bill's gleefully crunching and gnashing his nuts. <clears throat> okay. I just... I'm continuing to keep an eye out for Kinch, but waiting for the match to start. Mm-hmm. But Kent was human. Nope. Nope. Half orc. Amir was the human. Uh, ah, okay. I got them mixed up. Yep. And after a few moments of uh, them finishing the cleaning, the uh, a horn sounds from in from inside the uh, grated like interior of the arena. And you and a uh, rather uh, a rather pudgy dwarf comes out wearing in. Elaborate little, uh, little, uh, a wardrobe of like motley and, uh, a little pointy hat with bells on it. like, <laughs> welcome, gentlemen, ladies, dragons, children's pigs, to the Sinks Intermediate Challenge Routes. <coughs> Today, for our final act, we have the resident champion. The blonde lady, the blonde armored, up against <coughs> the newest challenger to her throne of throws. Eh, uh, uh, what, what's your name? Ha! <laughs> <laughs> oh, <mother God>. <laughs> 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 Is is that a name? <coughs> hmm. <laughs> um. He he the you see the man receive a paper airplane and unfolds it. Ah yes, Ty Win. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> the 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 crowd cheers and. And groans in equal amounts at either name. It's like, ah, get on with the fight. Like, yes, yes, we will get on with the fight. But we must remind you keep the projectiles outside of the arena. The weapons we give them are what we give them. Do not give them more instigations, please. Whatever, get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Are you ready, Mr. Uh, Win? Ha! Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you don't see either combatant. You just. <coughs> this is just this guy is just talking off stage, and you hear this shouting coming from down a little hallway. And he. The guy. The. The master of ceremonies is like, Alright, alright. Now. You get ready? You get set, ha! and voila, this orange tunicked elven looking person with a sprite, with like a little like winged light following behind him, this, that you think is a sprite, just, just uh, combat rolls out and strikes a pose with his sword and his, and his beetle shield and it's like, like, ha! It's like, Ah, uh, yes, the, um, chrono-crossed hero is it? What's that? <laughs> All right. Well, without further ado, we must bring out the armored blonde. And the grate on the opposite end of the arena opens very slowly and methodically as oh, this God. bulky, 
as this bulky plate male wearing humanoid walks out with a with a white plumed like ostrich feather capping off the the armored helm. You can't even see the eyes, all you see is the armor and it clank 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 as this this figure wields a a flail and a spear. Like the flail is currently on the on like a holster on the side, but they're, they're wielding a javelin right now, aimed and ready for our adamant young hero, who shows no fear. Hell, you can't even understand if he's showing fear at the moment. Oh, is this armored character who I think it is? Yep, probably. Oh, this poor, poor elf. We're gonna see some Smash Brothers in here. And the uh, Master of Ceremonies runs over to the back, uh, pulls out like a uh, what looks like a flying disc, and he's like, ready, steady, throws it in the air, and it promotes this whistling, crackling sound. It's like, begin! Waiting for a halfling in blue overalls to come out. As the orange tunic crazy boy just like yeah and just starts dive rolling dive rolling combat roll combat roll yeah! <laughs> pulls out a boomerang it's like yeah tosses it and all right it it donks off the armored helm jostling it to the side as the head tilts and then it slowly grates back into place as you can just see, like, the dark lines coming from it, like, anime stuff, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> Blood will spill! Blood will spill! <laughs> Blood for Bill! <laughs> gotcha, the crowd's gotcha, very gotcha. anxious, like, not, they're not all into like, like, there's some light cloud, like, yeah, let's... Come on, mate. Put your own. Come on. It's like they're starting to critique. They're starting just to actively critique the uh, the, the performance that's going on. It's quite hilarious, actually. <laughs> no, no, you gotta put your foot. You gotta put your best foot foot. No, no, he's just gotta let loose with his uh, his uh, his flying light. Oh, but that's a sprite, you fool. It's like yeah, it's yeah, yeah. And meanwhile, down in there, the uh, little elven boy is attempting to. Uh, uh, okay, he pulls out like this rod that has a hook in it. He's like, ha! Oh, Lifts it up into the sky, like Star Wars style, and points it and starts rubbing the rod very quickly. Like, and they're like, what the hell is that he's got? And all of a sudden, the hook. Shoots out and bonks off the arm. He's like, "Ah!" Yeah. He retracts his chain back into the rod. He's like, "Eh!" Shoves it into his satchel. He's like, eh. Meanwhile, the the armored figure is just standing there, waiting, tapping their javelin very patiently. Mm -hmm. Oh, that poor elf. Hmm. And as you're starting to get distracted from this, like, wow, this is pretty sad. You you finally take a break to take another, uh, pull another perception check for me. How do I want? All right. You take another angst look around, and about four rows, four rows over, at the very, very front, you see your white receding hairlined half-orc, uh, balancing a bunch of scrolls in one hand, and trying to keep an eye on the fight with the other, scrolling madly oh as he's just trying to take something, as he's also trying to eat, like, some sort of wrapped sandwich. Like more than Mike just died. Of course. Yeah, you you easily see the gentleman you're looking for. He's sitting up at the very, very front, about five rows over, towards the center, and eating, like, some sort of, like, tortilla sandwich, as well as balancing a bunch of scrolls and... Whatever, in his other hand. 
<laughs> so yeah, sorry you, you see Kench at the very, very front of the arena, just sitting at the very front row, about five rows over, with a bunch of scrolls and, a, and a, like a tortilla sandwich. Does it look like I'd be able to get to him, whether right now or Oh yeah, you just have to maneuver. It would take you about a minute or two to get over there, just because it's, it's a bit... There's a bit of a crowd, you just need to... It, these just... These just arenas... This seating is just so unwieldy. Okay, I look over to Hobo Bill. Seats. Enjoy the fight, Bill. <laughs> God zooks indeed! Don't leave. Hobo Bill is lonely. Hello. You glance over to the to the to the to the elderly women oh, on the other side. They've all fainted. <laughs> Take care, man. <laughs> and I get up and start heading, start making my way over to Ken. Glad Hobo Bill is in the. The music just got dramatic. Mm, music feels the same on my end. I mean, you are in an arena. Fair enough. Oh, there's two tracks playing. That's I only hear one. I just realized my mistake. Alright, so... Yeah, you start to make your way there. Meanwhile, the little orange tunic is attempting to uh, finally pull out his blade. He's like, ha! Ah! Pulls, pulls it up in the air. It shines and glistens. The MC is like, yes, our noble challenge has finally drawn his blade. What will happen as a result? Who knows? Mike. Can he distract and perhaps perhaps imp Impossibly damage of current holder of the realm? Who knows? As the as eventually he's drowned out by the ha! As the little guy runs forward and attempts to skewer the uh, the mis the mistress of armor. Not bad. Hey. Uh, he clangs off and it gets. and he's like, yeah! Keeps trying and he eventually points his sprite forward. You're maneuvering over, like, there's like a vendor with like popped corn kernels and uh, some various meat sticks. And even a guy with lemon. with lemon ale and shanty. While you're almost there, you're like within like two rows of him as. As the uh, orange tunic finally makes another swing at this personage, and again, the the uh, armored persona lifts their hand and it just clangs off their hand as they take the spear and attempt to whack the boy in the face. Attempt to what? Whack the boy in the face. Your mic died again. Whack the boy in the face. Okay. And oh boy, does that one succeed. Poor you Link. see blood splatter across the arena sand as there is now a, a, a bleeding hole in one of the boy's cheeks. Yeah. Uh, this is gonna be br <laughs> okay. such blood such blood sport. <laughs> you hear uh, Kench say about about six feet in front of you, like, oh, almost there. Okay. Once I'm within five feet of Kench, I say out loud to him, it's been a long, it's been a long time, sir. It's been a long time, sir. You shouldn't sneak up on someone for strangers. It. What would you? Oh, dash again. I offer Ken just smile and offer the Phoenix salute, whatever that would. Yeah, you, 
you offer the salute proper. Okay. Alright, so you're like, oh my boy, uh, Amir has joined a special crew of like a tactical team. I see. Yes, he's out and about on uh, royal business. But I'm glad to see you here in the city. I do hope you make good headway on your careens. I'm just uh, doing some uh, little paperwork. I've been doing some uh, some storekeeping in the meantime, you know, quartermastering and such. I'm uh, not good in the military anymore, but I do it for um, uh, local guard postings and uh, certain uh, medi medium level businesses. Definitely glad to hear it. Do you know what happened? What happened to the Phoenix Company? I heard something bad happened. Oh no, just r just rotten bureaucracy. Split it up due to f due to lacking dues and improper uh, management techniques. I see. Yeah, it's quite silly, really. But oh boy, they're finally getting to the meat of it. The armored person is now taking out the flail and is now spinning it very slowly, as if to taunt the young orange tunicked boy and they swing and they hit him directly in the chest and he just flies back about four feet and lands at a poof of dust like <laughs> about hello 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 hey, did I die Mike again shorted it yeah, when you're saying he fly to... He flew back four feet in the air and landed in a pile of dust. As you hear a... <laughs> that... That kid is completely outmatched. Hmm. Perhaps, but still, it's quite entertaining. You can't... can't disavow. This boy has quite the charisma. Compared to just the show of force that uh, the armored blonde is showing. Fair enough. She reminds me of a uh, human I ran into a while back. Don't don't know if I ever told you about her or not. A human? Yeah, bit of a. She was from that rival. She was from one of our rivals. A wizard. You're gonna have to narrow it down on that point. After all, there are a lot of mercenary companies, my boy. Do I remember the human's name? Uh, you did I not catch it. Uh, you just do remember, least... you'd remember her face if you saw it again, like, oh god. Do I remember where her, her color was? Uh, it's escaping you right now, you're like, huh, I can't remember. I thought it was, like, dirtier. No, dirtier no, or darker. I think she had, she was a dark-haired human, wore full plate. Huh. Real nasty attitude. Yeah. One everywhere, I suppose. As the young orange tunicked boy pulls himself up, Ty manages to pull out the sword once again and attempts to strike! Ooh! And he knocks the flail out of her hand as he rushes by in a dash attack. As the little wings on his boots flutter a little bit as he runs. Christ. <laughs> oh boy. Go look. At, at this, the armored individual finally takes this a bit more seriously and starts, as soon as it's out of her, out of their hand, they run for the javelin that they had uh, previously thrown and just barely missed the young, uh, young lad with. Okay. As the boy preps another dashing sword attack. And alas, he he dives and runs for her as she as she dives to the ground, and he just barely runs over her and trips and uh, knock. Yeah. Did I die? You did. Yeah, the boy attempts another dash attack. Uh, the armored individual dives to the ground as the boy trips over that personage and uh, tumbles a little bit, steadying himself with the sword. While the armored individual crawls a few more feet to, to eventually grab the javelin, strike a defensive pose while half kneeling. Okay, while this is going on, Dash would look to Kench. By the way, 
You wouldn't happen to know a woman named Vaughn in this city, would you? Towards the You're looking for Lady Vaughn? Next lead into the cult. Ah. Well, she's one of the higher tiered merchants of the area. Quite prolific in the shipping business. I see. You wouldn't happen to know how to get in contact with her, would you? Yeah, I, I do have some connections. I suppose I could uh, initiate contact. Um, it might cost a favor in order to get there. I'm afraid. Well, I'm all I'm all for get, helping helping you out. Who knows? Maybe even the crew, maybe even the crew I'm with now can can uh, help me help you as well. Oh, you found a new crew. Uh, yeah, a bunch of, a uh, few traveling companions, a, uh, tiefling, a tabaxi, and a half-life. And Hobo Bill! <laughs> Your mic died <laughs> at the perfect time. <laughs> Are you there, Brad? And Hobo Bill, too! <laughs> yeah, your mic died mid-Hobo Bill. It's pretty clear the kid's lost. The boy steadies himself with a sword and attempts a final mad dash attack for all or nothing. Let's see. And he makes it stick. However, the as he's celebrating, the handle pops off. It's like, it's like huh? Uh. Uh-uh. -oh. Oh no. Bye, when We knew thee well. As the uh, armored patron looks down at the sword embedded in them, looks back at the boy, he's like, Ha ha! And then the armor rushes toward the boy, kicks him in the nuts, and he flies into the wall. Oh god! That poor bastard. <laughs> All the dogs in the area shriek with uh, with agony. Uh, yep. Definitely reminds me of that. Uh, doom, doom, doom. And we have a winner! Yes! Once again, the Armored Blonde is victorious! The armored blonde wrenches the blade out of their midsection, tosses it on the ground, bends the steel back into place, and slowly just like rah rah, is like arms up, like bathing in the crowd, like yeah, you did good, you did good this time, yeah, you did good, marry me, <laughs> and they just keep wandering around, accepting applause from everywhere. And then they stop, and un and un and the helm slowly peels off, as you see this this rather quite pretty young woman with like sc with like a scar over one eyebrow, deep like a purple and red in its coloration, as she's got this awful smug sneer on her face, except in her eyes. But then she stops and stares at you. Oh, I knew it! <laughs> I recognize her, don't I? It takes you a second, but then the words rem hit you in the face like a train. Draconic scum! And we are going to end the session right there. Ah, uh, Dash again made a friend. Yeah, I, did, I didn't expect to run into all three characters I suggest in this session. One was an acquaintance, one was a friend. You can guess what the third one was. I thought they were both acquaintances. Oh, oh yeah, no, that, uh, Bill and Kench were both acquaintances. Maybe not so much. Yeah.
the moment I you described her in the arrow, I was like, "That's that's fucking her, isn't it?" Indeed, it was. And now I have a week or two to finally build the damn character. Well, that's gonna be a fun interaction. Oh boy, is it! Makes my time in the drink of the circus. I definitely like how you've set all these characters up, though. Especially Bill. Bill's fucking amazing. <laughs> Maybe. Are you kidding? I don't think you've known Brett as long as I have if you think he's gonna... Well, thank you all our audience for listening and taking part. We'll be back in a week or two with another episode, depending on how the schedules work out. And uh, thanks for following us at uh, twitch.tv slash 8 In the meantime, I'm Brett the Wiz. Take care, folks. They're Avin. And I'm, no I'm Nova Pierce. I didn't know we had to... And there's a there sock means. puppet ninja, ninja in there somewhere. Uh, I'm going to go back to playing Kingdom Hearts. We'll be back with more dynamics next time. Or it'll be more one-shots because why the heck not. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Either way, take it easy, guys. Yee!